Hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark. Welcome to part two of the video tutorial series for the PayPal Seller Spreadsheet version 2.0. In part one, I walked through an overview of what the spreadsheet does, and I also discussed how exactly to import your PayPal activity downloads from PayPal into the spreadsheet. In this video, we're going to discuss how to enter your expenses into your spreadsheet. First, let me talk a little bit about the expenses that you see here on the monthly summary tab. When we imported the monthly PayPal activity download into the monthly tab on the spreadsheet, your PayPal fees for the month and your PayPal shipping fees for the month were automatically totaled on these two blue lines. This is the cut that PayPal takes out of any of your sales. And the shipping fees are only if you use PayPal to generate and print shipping labels. So if you don't use PayPal for that, you're not going to see any amounts in that row. Now, you might be wondering why you can't automatically tabulate any other expenses from PayPal. That's because you can use your PayPal account to pay for virtually any sort of business expense. I can't set this spreadsheet up to where every expense that you do is automatically categorized because I don't know how to categorize it. If you did use your PayPal account to pay for items in your business other than just shipping labels, you can log into your PayPal account before this next step where we enter our expenses and you can open your monthly report to see your transactions for the month and that gives you a good idea of what sort of expenses you might need to enter. Now there's several different types of reports that will tell you this kind of info but I like to use the monthly statement which I'll show you real quick. So if you log into your PayPal account and you go to reports under statements you'll see monthly and these unfortunately aren't available until after the 10th of each month, but you can download a PDF of whatever month you want to look at, and it will look something like this. The first few pages are telling you sums of um, the month, and then if you get down to about page 4, it'll tell you a line-by-line -line list of all your transactions. So some of these might be sales um, that you already entered when you did your import, but others might be expenses that you used your PayPal account to pay for. So if you're trying to figure out um, where to get a good list of your expenses to enter into the spreadsheet one by one, this monthly report is a, is a good way of finding them. Now all the other expenses on this tab are either going to be entered directly here on white, the white rows or they're going to be entered receipt by receipt on these colored tabs. Since the expense tabs of the PayPal spreadsheet work exactly the same as the expense tabs of the Etsy version of the spreadsheet, I'm going to switch over to the videos that I used for the Etsy seller spreadsheet tutorial for the next few minutes. So if you're wondering in the tutorial why things might look a tiny bit different on the monthly summary tab or they say Etsy for example instead of PayPal, it's just because I'm using the Etsy video tutorials. Don't be confused, everything I'm saying is still going to apply to the PayPal spreadsheet, it just might look a tiny bit different. First, I want to note that for all your expenses, you should enter them as positive amounts. The spreadsheet already knows that they're expenses, and they're going to subtract them from your revenue for you. So don't enter anything as a negative here unless for some reason you have a refunded expense that you want to enter. Keep in mind that you've got a couple of custom lines here. So if you sell on like Amazon or some other venue as well and you have listing fees for that venue, you can enter those here. And then you've got your product expenses and your business expenses and a few custom lines for your business expenses, not to mention the fact that you have another tab here where you can enter miscellaneous stuff. So I've got uh, a few of the most popular expense categories here. For all these expenses, you should just go through um, weekly, preferably, if not monthly, and enter your receipts into these tabs. Um, 
So the first step is just to determine which tab the expense applies to. If it doesn't have um, an obvious home on one of these choices, you can either enter it on the other tab or as a custom expense line. Um, once you choose a tab to enter it on, you'll want to enter the date and it needs to be in this format, numerical format with um, forward slashes for the spreadsheet to work correctly. You'll enter the dollar amount, um, the vendor, a description if you want to, the source if you have multiple, multiple ways of paying for things just to make um, backing up that expense a little easier and um, an other column if there's some other type of info that you'd like to track. Um, and that's pretty much it for entering your expenses. It's pretty straightforward. Now, one of the helpful things about this expense, these expense tabs, all of them do it. Um, it, it'll be even more helpful once you have, you know, lots and lots of data here. But you can sort and filter on these expense tabs. In order to do that, you would just use the, um, any of the drop down arrows right here. So if you wanted to um, sort, that would that shows your data in a certain order according to the input that you put in. So let's say I'm going to sort by vendor. Okay, so now I've got all my vendors, all my expenses in alphabetical order by vendor. Or let's say I want to filter. That means I only want to see certain data. So let's say I only want to see everything that I paid for Facebook advertising. So I'm going to filter to see only my Facebook advertising expenses. Okay, so now I can easily see where my expenses are going um, and how much I'm paying for them. And I can mess around with the data to be most helpful with me, for me. Um, okay, so if I want to undo a filter, I can just hit clear filter, and now I get all my data back. And I'm going to keep things in chronological order, because that's just what makes most sense to me. But that's something cool that you can do with the data that you enter on your expense tabs. I have a lot of really important um, notes about entering your expenses and categorizing your expenses on the PDF instructions for this spreadsheet that I encourage you to read. I'm not going to read them out loud to you in the video series because you can read them, but um, make sure to check that out. There's also a bit more information in the PayPal seller spreadsheet instructions about how to categorize your expenses if you have questions about that, um, which I know a lot of people do. But uh, my general rule of thumb is just to pick the category that makes the most sense to you and be consistent with it from month to month. Um, I will say that the shipping tab, you can enter any postage costs on this yellow tab um, that doesn't already include your PayPal shipping fees. Make sure you don't actually enter those twice because that's already included on this blue row. And remember that you have these custom expense rows that you can use for other types of expenses that don't seem to have a home elsewhere. You've got the other tab where you can enter uh, other one-off expenses. And that's pretty much it when it comes to these expenses. The only other thing that I will say is that your materials and supplies Remember to distinguish between inventoryable supplies and supplies that are not inventoryable when it comes to taxes, okay? For bookkeeping, you can enter any kind of materials and supplies here that you want if you're just trying to keep up with how much you spent each month. But when it comes to taxes, remember that you cannot deduct those materials and supplies that go into your inventory until the year you actually sell the finished good or the finished inventory made with those supplies. You can read more about that if you're confused about what inventory and cost of goods sold are. You can read more about that at paperandspark.com. Um, I've also got a free video there that explains everything about what inventory is. So just keep that in mind when you're entering anything on your materials tab. So after you enter your expenses into the spreadsheet for the month, 
the monthly summary tab will take your total revenue and subtract your total expenses to tell you your net profit for the month. If this is a negative number, then you've got a net loss that month. And that is pretty much how you use your PayPal seller spreadsheet. Um, in the last video, I'm going to explain a little bit more about these light blue sales tax rows. Thank you.